you've ever wondered how many native mammals exist within the UK and what they all are, then I've made this video for you. This is one of five videos that are going to be introducing you to the 27 native land-living mammals in the UK and to show you how they're all related to each other. In this video we're going to look at all of our native mice, dormice and squirrels. Subscribe to Ferroforest to keep learning about UK nature. As we go through each of the species we're going to see how they all relate to each other by building a cladogram. A cladogram is a diagram that depicts evolutionary relationships of species. If you've never heard of one before and would like to understand more about them and scientific classification systems, then make sure you do check out the video that I've made on those, which I've linked to in the description below. Otherwise, let's get straight into our mammals. This blank image may look boring now, but by the end of this video series it will be filled with the entire mammal cladogram. Let's zoom in and start with the wood mouse. These mice have golden brown fur with an obvious paler underside. They have proportionally large ears and eyes, as well as a long tail. As adults, they grow to about 9 cm long, with a 9 cm tail, and only weigh 25 grams. Wood mice are common and found throughout the UK, including on some of the smaller islands. Although they're mainly found in woodlands and fields, this species is highly adaptable and can be found in a range of habitats so long as they're not too wet or exposed. Wood mice will gather leaves, moss and grass to build their nests. These nests exist in complicated underground burrows with different chambers. They will also create food stores out of berries and seeds to help them survive the winter, although their diet varies and can also include a range of green plants, flower buds and fungi. The most closely related species in the UK to the wood mouse is the yellow-necked mouse. They share a recent common ancestor species, which at some point in the past diverged into multiple species, including these two of our native mice. The yellow-necked mouse looks very similar to the closely related wood mouse, with a brown back and white underside. The distinguishing difference is a complete band of yellow fur across the underside of its neck. They grow slightly larger, weighing around 30 grams as adults, with an 11 cm long body and a 9 cm long tail. Another similarity to the wood mouse is its foraging and nesting habits. This species also lives in a series of underground burrows and it feeds on a range of seeds, fruits, green plants and invertebrates. This species has a rather unusual distribution. It's restricted to areas of southern Britain, where it varies in how common it is. The current range seems to be associated with long-established woodlands, but the species can be found in urban areas and gardens too. Although we don't have a full explanation for the strange distribution shape, there is no obvious decline in their range recently, so it's assumed that they aren't under threat. Yellow-necked mice have great anti-predator strategies. They're commonly eaten by foxes, weasels and owls, but if they do need to, they can actually shed the skin of their tail off to escape an attack. They can only do this once though, as the skin doesn't grow back, so they have other defensive methods. They are able to jump up to a metre in the air to avoid an ambush, which is more than eight times the length of their body. The next most closely related mammal in the UK is the house mouse. The house mouse has greyish brown fur over its entire body. Its tail is long, but is different from other mice because it's thicker and has much less hair. It's around 8 cm long with a 10 cm tail and weighs just 20 grams. You can find the house mouse across the UK where its population undergoes natural fluctuations. The house mouse thrives wherever there are people, although because of improved construction it's quite rare to find them within buildings nowadays. They're also found around farmlands. This species is an omnivore, preferring to eat cereals when it's near farmland and eating a substantial amount of insects when it doesn't have farm access. Females will raise their young in groups Groups, with usually two females nursing multiple young at once, regardless of whose offspring belongs to who. Each of these females is capable of having 10 litters a year, with up to 8 young in each litter, meaning they can create up to 80 new mice a year. Our fourth native mouse in the UK is the harvest mouse. At just 6 cm long, with a 6 cm tail, this is our smallest mouse. In fact, it only weighs 5 grams. It has gingery or yellow fur with a white underside, and particularly small, hairy ears. Harvest mice are found southwards of central Yorkshire, with spotty records in Scotland and Wales that are likely from released captive animals. They have recently become much more scarce, and so are listed as a biodiversity action plan species, which means that conservation management plans may help reverse this decline. The harvest mouse favours long, tussocky grasslands, reed beds and farmlands, where they're able to build their unique nests. 
They will shred grasses into strips by pulling them through their teeth and then weave a tight ball to nest inside. These nests are found on the stalks of grasses at least 30 centimetres above the ground, but can be found up to a metre above the ground. Each nest is freshly built for a new letter that's being born. Harvest mice have a very unique way to move around these grasslands. As are only native mammals with prehensile tails, their tails can wrap around objects to grasp on, and they use that to grasp on to grass stems and move around. The last two mammals of this video are much more distantly related to the mice we've been talking about so far. There are a few other rodents that are more closely related, but I'll be talking about them in the next mammals video. However, these last two belong in a group that split off earlier in evolution than any other rodents in the UK. The first one we're going to talk about is the red squirrel. Red squirrels typically have bright orangey red fur. They have large ear tufts that are most prominent in the middle of winter and a bushy tail that at 17 centimeters long is almost as long as their 19 centimeter long body. They weigh around 300 grams. Although once found across the UK, red squirrels have mostly disappeared due to grey squirrel introductions. They are now confined to Scotland, a few regions of northern England and Wales, and small islands off the south of England. They are found across much of Ireland, but also have a shrinking range there. They are reliant on woodlands to provide them with their favoured food of nuts, seeds and other plant matter. Their very body is built to survive in trees, with double jointed ankles that let them easily move up and down the trees. Red squirrels make their nests within the fork of branches or within holes in trees. These nests are called drays and they're made up of twigs and lined with soft mosses and leaves. Several red squirrels can share a dray at once. Emerging evidence suggests that increasing pine martin populations causes grey squirrel populations to collapse. This may be a solution that could help populations of two of our native mammals to recover, pine martins and red squirrels. The final mammal of this video might be a surprising one. The hazel dormouse is more closely related to the red squirrel than to any other native UK mammal. Despite its appearance, the hazel dormouse isn't actually a mouse. In fact, as you'll see in the next video, both hazel dormice and our mouse species are more closely related to the beaver than they are to each other. You can identify a hazel dormouse by its orangey yellow fur all over and its thick furry tail. It has large eyes and ears to help its nocturnal lifestyle and its paws face sideways to help it climb. Hazel dormice prefer woodlands and overgrown hedges where they can climb among all of the vegetation without having to come down to the ground. The loss of our ancient woodland and hedgerows means that this species now mostly only exists in the southern counties of England, except for a few localised populations in the north and Wales. Even in ideal habitats, they have low population densities and their population fall of over 50% since 1995 means that they and their nests are now protected from disturbance by the law. A combination of the reduction of traditional forestry methods reducing their ideal habitats and climate change waking them up earlier in the year when there isn't sufficient food available means that this species is in trouble. Within their ideal habitats, you're unlikely to spot them as they sleep in tightly woven nests within hollow tree branches during the day. At night, they'll be out foraging for a range of flowers, pollen, fruits, nuts, and insects. One of the most clear signs that they have been around is a hollow hazelnut with a perfect circle gnawed out of it to get to the food inside. The hazel dormouse is one of only three hibernating mammals in the UK and our only hibernating rodent. As the weather cools down, they move to ground level where they create a tightly woven nest of plant materials to curl up inside. They will wrap their tail around their face and body to keep them warm. As you can see from the six species introduced in this video, a cladogram reveals interesting relationships between species. The fact that red squirrels and hazel dormouse are more closely related to each other than all the mice species is something you wouldn't know just by looking at these animals. The relationships between our mammals gets even more interesting, as you'll see in the next video part of this series, where I'm going to introduce you to our native voles, beaver and hare.